Hi, I'm back here again in Swift Pause back office, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to perform a manual stock take in Swift Pause so that you can record your inventory stock levels periodically over time and report on these for internal auditing purposes. Many venues perform a stock take once a month, generally at the end of the month. However, depending on the size of your venue, you might like to do this more frequently or less frequently. If you have multiple locations set up in Swift Pause, and each of them holds stock of their own. You can also do a stock take on just one of these locations while not affecting the stock count of any other locations. Prior to performing a stock take, you should ensure that you have all of your invoices posted. So any stock that has arrived should already have been invoiced in. Any transfers that have been done internally have also been processed in back office and all stock which has been transferred or invoiced to a particular location is physically in that location when you do the stock take. So to start your manual stock take, the first thing you'll want to do is print off some stock count sheets. These are found in inventory, reports, inventory, and count sheets. You can use the filters to isolate just a single location or a single group of products. You can also choose what order the products are listed in and how they are grouped together. I'm going to choose just location one for now and then I'll run this report. Here we can see the count sheet, which you might like to print off. It tells you what stock it believes you have on hand. At the moment, I have zero on hand for everything. It tells you the location reference number and it provides a space for your inventory count. Because stock of the same item might be stored in several different locations, you may come across it more than once, which is why you have space for multiple counts of that particular item, as well as a column for the total, which is going to be the sum of all those individual counts. So you can print this off, and then we can proceed with the rest of the stock take. The next thing you'll want to do is navigate to stock take and period end. And here we see the location lock screen, which currently has no locations assigned to it. So we're going to go ahead and add one by clicking on add in the bottom left hand corner. And we're going to add just the restaurant location. You'll be warned that the location will be locked and you can proceed with that. This means that any sales which take place from now until we release the location will not decrement your stock. And likewise, any invoices which are put in will also not increment your stock. Once we've committed our stock take and then released the locations, any stock movements will then take place to give you an accurate reflection of your current stock on hand. With this location locked, we can now head to count entry. And now we can populate this list with our product count. And there are two ways that you can do this, depending on how you've counted your stock and how many products you have. The first way is that you can add each row individually by clicking on add item to give you a new line in the grid where you can press enter on your keyboard and choose the product. However, that's going to be a bit tedious if you have many different products. So we might like to use the add products wizard. I'm going to delete this row. Save my changes and then click on add products wizard. There are three sections in this wizard and the filters that you see will be similar to the ones we saw when we were running the count sheet. So you may like to set the same filters which you used to generate your count sheets. Once you work through that wizard, the grid will be populated with a list of all of your products and you can start entering your count. Your product counts will be entered in the add field just above the count column and you can shift to the next product just by pressing enter so this way you can work quite quickly through your various counts. As you're filling in your counts you'll see your variance quantity in the variance column. This number is the difference between the stock on hand which is currently zero and the count which is in this case eight so the variance is of course eight. 
the variance can be positive or negative, and the variance is going to have a value based on the cost of the product. For certain kinds of products, for example, keg beers, it's normal to have some kind of variance due to wastage, spillage, uh, line cleaning, things like that. And other stock items may have a variance due to breakage or any other reason. However, if you do see a very large variance, for example, a multiple of 30 or a multiple of 24, it might suggest that you've missed a carton of beer, for example, in your count, and you might like to double check that location and recount that item. If you find products on this list which you have not counted and you do not want to assign a zero count value to, you can remove them individually by clicking on the line header and then clicking delete item. You can also remove a set of items from this list by clicking on the first item, holding shift and then clicking on the next item down to select a group. You can remove that group as well. And if, for example, only about 50% of your products have been counted, and we don't want to commit any that don't have a, a count in this field, I'm just going to set up an example here. So you can see that my counts are scattered randomly throughout this list. We can click on the count header column and that's going to sort this entire list uh, from lowest to highest count, leaving us with our positive values down the bottom and all of our zeros above that. So you might like to do that after you've entered your count and then simply remove all of the zero values. Again, holding shift and clicking on the top item, clicking on delete items. And now we're just left with the items with a count against them. Now I'm going to save my changes. And before you commit your stock take, there are a few reports that you might like to run. The most commonly run reports are going to be the variance report, the inventory theoretical value report, which is going to tell you your theoretical value if you were to commit the stock take as it is now. And you may also like to run a stock take report and keep that for your records so that at any time you can come back to that report and see exactly what was committed at what date on which products. Once you run these reports, you can save them to your computer or print them out. I'm going to skip over that now and we'll go ahead and commit this stock tag. You'll be warned to check that your start date and reference ID are correct. You can click yes to proceed and you'll be asked to choose a location to save your stock count reports. These are automatically generated reports which SwiftPoz provides as these reports can't be run again at a later time to get the same figures. I'm just going to stick with the default location which is in my documents and click OK. When that's been completed and I click OK, the grid will be reset and I'll be pushed back to the location lock screen. At this point you can release your held location. You can either click on release to release just one or using the little arrow next to release you can release all locked locations. At this point any sales and invoices that were done in that time have now been decremented or incremented and you can click on record period opening stock which will make a record of what you currently have on hand so that you can report on that at a later time if you need to. We'll click yes, choose a date if need be, and that stock take has now been completed. If you'd like to report on previous stock takes, you can do that in reports, in inventory, and stock take listing. This should show you a list of all the previous stock takes that were done throughout the year or whichever date range you choose. And that way you can ensure that your stock takes are being done regularly, once a week or once a month, depending on your preferred frequency. Great, so that's how you can perform a manual stock take. In subsequent videos, I'm going to talk about how to stock take using a PDE 
stock taking device as well as stock taking for multiple locations at the same time. I hope that's been of use to you. Thanks for watching and I will catch you in the next video.